Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 17th edition of the Coffee Microcaps morning meeting. Um, I'm just going to do the standard uh, bits of housekeeping, and then we're going to get straight into it with our first presenter. My name is Mark Tobin. I'm the founder of Coffee Microcaps. For anybody who hasn't joined us uh, in the past, just a quick compliance and disclaimer slide. Uh, for anybody who hasn't joined us in the past, we generally run these every fortnight. Uh, it's a quick one hour webinar where we get two companies to present uh, 30 minutes each. The 30 minutes are generally broken down with 20 minute prezzo uh, and then we leave 10 minutes open for Q&A at the end. If you do have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box and then I'll try and fit as many in as we can in the 10 minutes. Uh, please don't use the chat function, the, the Q&A box um, and functionality works a, a, a lot better for, for this purpose. Uh, please note that the webinar is being recorded and it will be posted on the Coffee Microcaps YouTube channel uh, and all the previous events are also there. So if you wanna watch back today's presentation or any of the previous ones, you can check us out there. Uh, if you want to follow Coffee Microcaps, we're on Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. And I also run a, a weekly paid newsletter, which can be found on the Substack newsletter platform. Uh, our first presenter this morning, uh, who is graciously joining us from Tel Aviv in Israel, is Mr. Ida Levan, uh, CEO of Dragon Tail Systems. And after that, we're going to have coming in from Brisbane, Mr. Pat Howard of MSL Solutions Limited. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and we are going to get Ido up. So Ido, if you want to start sharing your screen now, I'll let you know when I can see your cover slide. Okay, I can see your cover slide now, Ido, you're ready to go. Hi everybody, uh, nice uh, to meet you uh, over uh, the internet waves. Uh, my name is Ido Lebanon. Uh, I'm the co-founder and uh, CEO of uh, Dragon Tail System. Um, those of you who don't know, uh, don't know much about us. So we uh, uh, were founded uh, seven years ago uh, as an Israeli startup, technology startup. Uh, with the uh, one goal in mind, which is to develop a uh, unique technology, AI-based technology, uh, mostly for the food delivery industry. Um, it took us several years to develop two uh, key flagship products. They are unique, uh, they are one of, the, of a kind, and even as of today, seven years since we started, there is no other uh, technology. Uh, that does exactly what we do. Um, took us several years to develop this um, deep technology. And uh, even just as of a year and a half ago, uh, we were only installed at about 200 and some locations uh, because um, uh, this technology is really game changing, business disruptive. It changes the way the restaurant operate. So it took a while for, to develop it and also for it to be tested by some of the key uh, customers. And just uh, in the last year and a half, we went from 200 in some location to over uh, 2,300 or close to 2,500 now. Uh, and we are moving from um, a development phase uh, to a growth phase. Some of our key customers are uh, Domino's, Pizza Hut, KFCs. Uh, we just uh, announced uh, last week uh, Papa John in the US uh, and some others. Like I said, we have two major flagship products. One is called the Algo uh, dispatching system, uh, which basically automate uh, the entire restaurant operation from the moment the order shows up in the kitchen it uh, optimized the kitchen operation, the packing, the dispatching, and the delivery. And no other system uh, does that. So you may sometimes confuse or some, some confuse us with last mile solution. We are not the last mile solution. We are every mile solution. We start in the kitchen 
and, and that's where the heart of the system is. Um, we also have a, a unique artificial intelligent uh, computer vision camera uh, that monitors the food preparation and food quality, and I will dive into those two products uh, shortly. It's important to point out that we solve almost all the key problems that every restaurant is facing, whether it's rising labor costs, difficulty of finding drivers, mistake in food preparation, long delivery times, food waste, backlog in the kitchen, competition, and so much more. And recently, um, we are facing uh, the COVID-19, so we enhance our system uh, with some great uh, enhancement that help a restaurant to operate uh, uh, in a way that it uh, provide more safety and uh, contactless uh, solution. Before we dive into our technologies, just a quick uh, business snapshot. Um, like I said, if you look here on the right side, uh, we were at about 200 uh, locations uh, uh, growing into over 2,300. Uh, our contracted stores have been growing uh, significantly and will uh, continue to grow uh, heavily. Um, our cash receipts, just if you look at the last three quarters, uh, you start seeing the results uh, of us uh, scaling up. Um, very important to point out, uh, we are game-changing technology, but such a technology that as of today, we didn't lose one customer uh, or one store. So we have 100% customer retention. Uh, actually, we are gaining uh, customers that used an inferior type of technology. And uh, that's something we are very proud of. While uh, when a customer or a restaurant switch over to our technology, uh, and you'll see some of the customer testimonials shortly, they never go, uh, go back. They actually question how they were able to operate before without our technology. Um, some of the key recent wins, um, we have announced just, I think it was last week, uh, our expansion in the US. Uh, this is a, a new market for us and we have been uh, working hard to get into that market. We weren't ready until recently we perfected our technology, uh, we tested, we improved it, um, until actually a few weeks ago, we never even have a sales, had a salesperson or a marketing person. All the business we did receive, the thousands of locations we have, was inbound um, uh, business. CEOs of large uh, companies like the CEO of Domino's Australia, for example, um, they flew into Israel, they uh, met with us, they saw our technology, and that's how we, we you know, we gain our business. Uh, and now with the recent funding, we start hiring uh, sales personnel and we are ready to expand into the US. And just as we started, we already announced some major wins like Papa John, uh, Sweet Greens, uh, we're getting into the food trucks uh, sectors and, and so much more. Uh, a month or two ago, uh, we announced a, a big uh, contract with the Telepizza or what's called Food Delivery Brand Group, 2,500 location. Um, we also expanded to many other markets. We are actually now in every continent in the, uh, on the globe. We also, when it comes to collaboration, uh, we recently uh, partnered with Uber Eats, Deliveroo, a grab, food, ba uh, food panda, and many others. <clears throat> As I mentioned, we are spread almost all over the world. Um, you can see so some of the countries we are operating in. Um, most of those countries, they're all just happened in the last uh, three months. And the US, which we just announced uh, this month. Um, our technology sits in every uh, important point or section in the restaurant. So we control the kitchen via a make line. 
Uh, we have the camera, the quality control camera, which we'll talk about. We have a PEC station, a dispatch station. We have a special app to the for the restaurant drivers and also for the third party drivers. The customers, the end users are able to fully uh, engage with what's happening in the restaurant from the moment they place the order. They can track the food preparation and the driver's location. And then the manager have a special uh, BI uh, system that help them uh, find out bottlenecks and better uh, control their operation. Uh, I will uh, briefly go into our first uh, flagship product. It's called the Algo uh, uh, system. And I will show you just a two minute uh, quick video just to give you an idea for those of you who are not familiar with the technology. Uh, here we go. The sun has disappeared over the horizon and evening is set in Westy, a quiet Upper West Side neighborhood. Mary just arrived home after an exhausting day only to find three very hungry children. Jimmy, Mary's next door neighbor, is getting ready to watch tonight's NBA match and is already dialing to order a nice meal to enjoy while watching the game. While Mary's kids are making up their mind, others in Westy are already ordering. At the restaurant, the cook has just finished preparing Jimmy's order and is moving on to the next order in line. Nick, the only driver currently at the restaurant, is heading out to deliver Jimmy's order. Jimmy lives quite far and it's going to take Nick 20 minutes to get back. Meanwhile, at the restaurant, orders are waiting outside the oven and getting cold. The busy manager wasn't able to notice that Jimmy's and Mary's order should have been sent out together. Now, if the restaurant was operating with the Algo dispatching system, this sad story would have turned into quite a happy one. In this story, the system prioritizes the orders as soon as they are received at the restaurant, before they even appear in the kitchen for preparation. While the cook is preparing Jimmy's order, the system pushes Mary's order forward over the orders that arrived in between. Mary's and Jimmy's orders are now in and out of the oven together, just in time for Nick to pick them up and deliver them together. This is a win-win-win-win situation. Mary, Jimmy, and other customers receive faster and better service. Orders arrive hot and fresh to their destinations. The owner saves money on gas, mileage, and labor cost. Nick, the driver, is happy to be making more deliveries per hour and the lovely Westie is slightly less polluted. This was just a simple example with a few orders and one driver. Now just imagine real life situations with dozens of orders and eight or more drivers. The Algo Dispatching System, all you need to upgrade your business. So this was just a very quick uh, attempt to explain to you the power of the system. It's important to point out that this is a true AI system and we replace all the key decisions that are currently made manually by the shift manager, by the cooks, by the dispatcher. And, and we put a, an AI system inside the store that make the most optimized decision. And that way, uh, the food is always arriving hot and fresh, faster, um, and while the customer is able to track what's going on. Um, our algo system comprise of several stations, like we said, the make uh, screen, which is uh, used in the kitchen, the pack station, the dispatch, the driver app. Um, we also have a driver sharing capability. So uh, restaurants that are close uh, to each other can share drivers. We recently established great relationship with many, many um, global uh, aggregators or third-party drivers, and we now control their drivers, track their location, and able to incorporate them uh, either together with the restaurant's own drivers or uh, some restaurants only use third-party drivers, but this time we optimize the entire operation. We have additional models that I won't go into, like a curbside pickup, VIP orders that allow customers to receive their order faster if they want to pay a little bit extra. We even establish a driver safety model where you control the way the driver is uh, driving and that way uh, the restaurant can reduce insurance cost. Quickly jumping into our uh, second uh, flagship product, which is again an AI-based uh, uh, camera. 
uh, basically what it, it does, uh, it enable uh, the restaurant to fully uh, not worry anymore about mistaken preparation and about quality issues. And maybe instead of me explaining you uh, what it does, I will let the dominoes, uh, Don, uh, that you many of you are familiar, uh, Domino's CEO in Australia, uh, to explain uh, what it does, uh, starting with the TV campaign that Domino's uh, was running, and then you can briefly see Don on uh, Channel 9 uh, morning talk show. At Domino's, we're always trying to be better. We aim to deliver great quality pizzas, but we know that sometimes we don't get it right. And even one bad experience is one too many. So we've set our sights on a solution with our biggest product quality innovation ever. Introducing Domino's Pizza Checker. The next leap forward in our Drew Artificial Intelligence program. Pizza Checker is an electronic eye that will soon be above every Domino's cutting bench in the country. It instantly checks the quality of every pizza we make, then displays it online for every customer to see. Pizza Checker verifies pizza type, correct toppings, topping distribution, crust type, and temperature. In partnership with a company called Dragon Tail, is that we have a digital camera system that actually shoots every single pizza live as soon as it hits our cut table, and then that product shot is then sent to the customer if it passes. Now it also has to pass a grading. So is it good or if it failed? Now if it failed, then we will actually apologize to the customer and tell them that we're remaking their pizza. You are all kinds of genius. Don is good. Uh <laughs> So you can see it here uh, also in the KFC environment. It can be used also in a hotels environment, room service, buffet, and many other applications. Actually, uh, I forgot to mention that uh, when we just announced last week some of our initial wins in the US, one of them was a sweet green and sweet green is a one of the fastest growing salad uh, type delivery a fresh salad and they are using the camera uh, for uh, quality assurance making sure that the salads have the, the correct ingredients uh, match what the customer was ordering the right quantity and so on and so forth this is a forbes magazine uh, article that was uh, just uh, uh, came out uh, two months ago, I believe, and that was to celebrate one year anniversary since we went live with Domino's here in Australia and New Zealand. And uh, uh, there are some great quotes from uh, management of Domino's talking about 15% uh, improvement in customer satisfaction, talking about uh, how it completely uh, changed their uh, um, business and improved it and so much more. Talking about customer experience, some of the results uh, that uh, we are getting, actually every major customer that install our system is raving about the results. Uh, this is the some quotes here from the chief uh, customer officer at Yam Brands in Europe, uh, saying things like, thanks for being a partner in making this happen and we are just getting started. No other market has shown even close to this type of improvement, not even half. Uh, you can see some ROI. Uh, here is a rollout we did in, um, in the UK uh, that we just finished a few months ago. And as soon as we were done rolling out, customer satisfaction went up, customer complaints went down. Um, this is an Asian market, actually. This is from Singapore. Uh, they measured the hot and fresh. How, what percentage of the meals arrived within 12 minutes uh, from the time they left the oven. You can see big improvements there. Other markets report, report for example, a, a reduction in mistake in preparation. And the ultimate results we love to point out is the fact that after our system is installed, 
cust repeat customer business is, is going up. And after all, if our technology does what it's supposed to do, customers receive their order faster, it's always hot and fresh, um, then they will come again and buy more. Just one minute, I know I have a, about a minute left before uh, the question. So our strength, uh, some of our uh, strength is leading unique technology. Like I said, no other uh, company that we are aware of, and we are out there talking to many customers, uh, have developed what we have. Uh, I don't need to explain to you the large uh, addressable market. Uh, COVID-19 just made food delivery a must. So every restaurant is now shifting into delivery, increasing their delivery segment. Um, we have a global recognition. We are already operating in, even if you just look at Australia, we are dealing with the, we, we are supplying our technology to the two biggest competitors, Pizza Hut and Domino's, for example. Our ability to scale up is proven. Uh, we are growing, yet our operating expenses are staying constant. Uh, so far, we raised uh, about 28 million uh, US. Um, you can see here the different rounds. The recent round uh, was done just in the last few months and uh, Elridge, which is one of the US fund, just uh, announced uh, early this week, I believe it was Monday or maybe uh, late last week, uh, that they are uh, completing their uh, second trench and adding another five uh, and a quarter million. So we raised only, and I emphasize only 28 million so far to develop all this technology and already have it been rolled out globally. Uh, we, with the Elridge funds uh, that should be in uh, by next month, we should be at about 7 million uh, in the bank, which is more than enough for us to uh, continue our growth. Um, some investment highlights, I will, you know, I think this is going to be large, so I, I won't go into that. Um, and some corporate summaries you can see here. Um, and maybe I should leave that slide on. I think that's the last slide. Uh, and uh, and we can uh, jump into uh, questions. Okay, that's great, Ida. Thank you very much. Um, we've got a couple of questions. Some they've come in through live and um, one or two that were emailed to me ahead of time. So if I take the, the first one, I mean, the rollout with Domino has been very successful according to uh, customer satisfaction results in Australia. Um, what are you doing to leverage this move uh, into Domino's in other international markets? Because I know, you know, Domino's Australia also operates internationally. Correct. And Domino's uh, requested uh, to extend their exclusivity uh, into this coming year because uh, there were plans as they reported. So if you dig uh, into some of their uh, investors' presentation, they were planning to expand our uh, cameras into Japan and Netherlands. As we know, the COVID just reshuffled everything. Mm. Uh, so with the... the as, as it stated in the Forbes magazine, uh, Domino's is extremely happy uh, with what he did for them. So you can just imagine their uh, uh, need for to implement it in other markets. Uh, the COVID kind of slowed uh, things down. Uh, and on top of it, we have, uh, and this was also announced, uh, I would say about three or four months ago, uh, we have uh, expanded the capabilities of our camera with Domino's to also monitor cleanliness, uh, again, due to COVID, cleanliness of the working areas, uh, where they prepare the pizza, where they cut the pizzas, and this is now being implemented uh, across Domino's in Australia. So uh, our partnership with Domino's is, is, is great. And, uh, you know, it's one thing to install a technology but uh, it's a different thing when it comes to the customers after one year of using it, uh, being so happy with it and seeing the results. And then the second thing is, is Domino's using the, 
the dispatch product. Um, I remember being on a site tour at the Domino's one time in a, in a former life, and I think they had this kind of internally developed dispatch product that mightn't be as um, as effective as yours, or are they just using the the quality control one at the minute? Correct. So they currently only use the quality control for now, and that is true. They have a G, their own GPS system. Domino's was actually the first among, uh, only the first in the world to use uh, a GPS system. Uh, this uh, parallel to uh, last mile solution where the drivers can be tracked and the customer can track the driver. And this is nice, but is definitely not as nice as the complete uh, algo system that we have because we start, as you've seen in the short video, we start optimization in the kitchen. So before the, the order even show up for the cook. So there is, with our system, there is no more fee for first in, first out. That is a whole new level of optimization and it's a, it makes a big difference. It's also guaranteed hot and fresh because you're never gonna get a cook prepare a pizza in the case of Domino's, unless there is a driver ready to pick it up. And so, Obviously, we haven't announced anything yet with Domino's when it's come to our algo system. Uh, so as of now, they are yet to use uh, the algo system. And I'm, I might just try and tackle these two uh, ones that were emailed ahead of time that the person couldn't join us this morning. They just wanted to get an understanding of the of the unit economics, Edo. So they, they gave me the example. Let's on, say somebody owns five KFC franchises in Manchester. You know how much does the, the QT system or the or, or the algo system cost if if I'm looking ahead from a you know a, a reason a reasonably medium to small size kind of franchisee? So if it's a small chain, they will pay as much as two up to two hundred or around two hundred dollar for the algo, and the camera is about fifty to sixty dollar. Um, but honestly, oh or in reality, we, we have yet to deal with smaller customer. We went directly all the way to the big player, the kings and the queen of the industry um, with thousands of stores and they're paying less. And so the, the average price or the average charge per location for the algo system with the major customer that has, uh, you know, uh, upward of a thousand or several thousand is around a uh, hundred dollar for the base uh, algo system. But if they're adding, let's say, driver safety in other models, it can go up to a uh, hundred and fifty dollar. And the camera can be thirty or forty dollar. Uh, uh, actually, I should say at least forty dollar US. Uh, but we do have uh, customers though the camera is doing a more extensive work and then it, the camera can even be a couple of a hundred dollar uh, per location. And is that on a monthly, quarterly? That, I'm basis? sorry, that is a monthly reoccurring monthly fee, correct. Monthly. So okay. uh, just to kind of uh, give a proportion on those numbers, uh, our operating expenses have been steadily around 500 or actually in the last six months, we have been running less than 500 a month, surprisingly enough, even though we, we more than 10 times the install base we used to have a year and a half ago. So we're managing, like I said, to be very effective. Our technology is such that it's been able to uh, be uh, distributed globally, yet you don't increase your operating expenses. So at about 500K a month, and that's what we expect it to stay, uh, we need to be at about six to uh, six thousand to six uh, uh, six thousand five hundred location to break even. We're currently, like as you know, uh, shy of twenty five hundred. But with all those announcements that we just made uh, just last week, Papa John, Papa John is a uh, three thousand location in the U.S. and another uh, uh, fifteen hundred. Uh, in Canada and some other location. We also announced a franchisee, a large franchisee in the US with more than 800 location. Uh, so you can see how we are ramping up quickly towards that uh, 6,500 uh, uh, location and much more. Okay, and then I'll 
ask for forgiveness from our next presenter. I'll just squeeze one more in. Um, how long does an installation, this is linked to the kind of unit economics, how long does a installation normally take? And I guess in COVID times, can it be done remotely or do you need to be on premise? Excellent question. So look at this, uh, COVID started in March. Uh, here are the countries we installed just in the last few months where we never left our offices. Ecuador, Germany, we went live for the first time in Germany with the uh, KFC. Uh, Spain, South Africa, a whole new continent. We have already several dozen stores in South Africa. We've never been in that country. And I can go on and on and on. So the, again, the greatness of our technology, and that's why it took us six years to develop, is not just that it's unique AI game-changing technology, it's a technology that can be installed and controlled uh, remotely and very successfully. We never had a restaurant down. Uh, and like I said, we never had a restaurant that turned off our technology. Okay. You know, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there because I'm conscious of time and our next presenter is uh, patiently waiting for us. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. I know it's very late at night in Tel Aviv. So thank you uh, for taking the time to be with us here this morning. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Okay, and then without further ado, I'm going to move on to our second presenter, uh, Pat Howard from... MSL Solutions, who's joining us from Brisbane, Pat. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll just make sure I get my presentation up there and uh, and we'll see if we can share that. If you can tell me if that's come up. And I'm uh, going to seek forgiveness now for starting slightly late with you. Oh, look, I, I was listening to Edo and I appreciate he was up at midnight. And uh, I think for anybody listening in today, they should be reasonably hungry at the end of this uh, dual presentations off the back of what Edo's presented. And look, there is some synergies. He's trying to help people order in their house and sit in their seats. We're trying to get people out and uh, go to events and enjoy their events. And I'm sure those in, who've been locked down in Melbourne really appreciate that, but you actually have to have a far more flexible solution. So there's some nice synergies between what you've listened to and what we will present. Um, for the uninitiated, uh, MSL is probably in a different position to the presentation you just heard. Uh, where, you know, after our post acquisition announced only two weeks ago, we have recurring revenues of 20 million. Uh, we've shown that we're profitable in the second half of FY20 and continue to be cash flow positive. Um, we're in 5,000 venues. 4,000 of those are hospitality type venues, but far larger than the previous um, presentation you heard. And then we're also in golf. So when you, for the uninitiated, MSL is a, uh, we've got one vertical of golf and the other vertical in venues. For those golfers on the call, if you have a handicap, you are already a customer of ours. Uh, we own a company called Golflink, and every golfer that has a handicap in Australia pays us three dollars fifty. Uh, and we globally launch World Handicap at the start of the calendar year two thousand and twenty. To get a picture of our other part of our business, that bring your own device. As you can see, there's an example of our ordering apps that are white label for all our venues, very much like the previous presentation. The ability to it, um, ordering has changed. In table ordering, outside ordering, uh, the ability to extend your point of sale from behind a, a seat like we used to do or behind a service desk out into your tables, out to the outside, out into parks across the road. And the way that you order and um, contract meals have very much changed. We very much are focused on your point of sale. Um, as an extension point, it allows your inventory management and the connection between all of those. To give you an idea of who we are, we are we've got over 5,000 customers, i.e., venues. Uh, we're in 30 plus countries between uh, the venues and golf. Have 180 employees plus then a reseller network of another 40 companies with well over 120 staff. Um, predominantly in Australia and New Zealand, but we do have presence in the USA, Japan, India, and post the acquisition, we look to drive that very strongly. Um, focusing on what is a venue, stadiums and arenas. We're in 14 of the 20 English Premier League clubs. Uh, pub and member clubs in Australia dominate our uh, area here. Sporting associations, golf clubs and golf federations, obviously, marinas. And 
you can see that in any of those venues, you can order, extend your point of sale and order your capability will be on that, where you are. We have, and I'm sure you've all used it on this call, um, connecting customers through contactless entry. I'm sure you've all had to put your phone up to a, a QR code that also identifies you, helps you do ordering and payment solutions. And um, to give you an idea of, of a, some background, uh, the first test at the, um, uh, at the Gabba coming up in January, uh, people will be able to order in their seat, order their pie, order their drink, and they know that it'll be coming down in their seat. And this is through our systems. Uh, to give you an idea of um, the stadiums, arenas, uh, as I said, 14 of the 20, but the MCGs, the Gabbers, Stadium Australia, the largest stadium in Australia by capacity, uh, not by capacity now, most MCG, but then you've got member-based organisations, golf clubs and associations. Our biggest contract uh, is with Golf Australia. It's out till 2025 uh, and it's web value around about one and a half million dollars a year. And then we have other hospitality such as Maryvale. Uh, it's interesting, Pizza Hut comes up uh, in terms of inventory management. Uh, they're a customer of ours in terms of the back end. So there's some integration from our previous interview and those other opportunities there. Um, some of the key points, and this is even prior to the SwiftPost acquisition that was announced two weeks ago, we'd already had a strong turnaround. Um, the chairman, myself, and the CFO joined in August 2019, um, and we have had uh, EBITDA positive in the second half of FY20. That excludes any government assistance, so that only adds to our cash flow position. We've been cash flow positive um, from January all the way through um, that period through to uh, end of the first quarter. Uh, we have had a very big focus on OPEX, and you'll see some of our revenue went down, and, and that was a conscious decision to close down unprofitable products. That process will continue where we are focused on um, products that we own, products that we can own the technology roadmap, uh, and that we can actually generate greater margin and profitability. Uh, there was a, a process here that has been going on and will continue to go on to make sure that recurring revenue exceeds OPEX. On that basis, we are getting the cash receipts to grow. And uh, the first quarter um, of FY21, we saw some real growth coming out of COVID and we believe that will continue going forward in FY21. Uh, as I said, recurring revenue to OPEX has been a focus. Uh, you can see since that new management joined in sort of uh, end of the first quarter, uh, FY20, we've had a significant change in our sustainability. Uh, and it's been a real focus and by region and by country. We have uh, offices in the UK, we have offices in uh, mainland Europe, Denmark, and three offices in Australia headquartered in Brisbane. To give you an idea of how we are built, and COVID has actually been a real benefit to this, is that uh, whilst we did have a lot of annual invoicing before COVID, in working with a lot of businesses to manage their cash flow, uh, many have gone to monthly and direct debit. And it has changed our cash profile for the better. It helps our customers manage their cash flow, which is fantastic. And we're obviously getting them on direct debit takes a lot of operational benefits out of that as well. Um, we're seeing that process continue in the UK. They're going through exactly the same cycle Australia saw in May and June to convert from annual to monthly. And it's been seen uh, very, very positively. Um, every new sale, and just to get an understanding of that, is a mixture of recurring revenue, professional services, i.e. the implementation, and hardware. Um, to go to the previous question that I overheard towards the end of the previous presentation, we all through COVID, even without our ability to travel, we have been able to deploy um, uh, remotely. Uh, only as recently as last week, we did the Cook Islands. We've done um, some work in Fiji and in PNG, and we can remotely deploy in the UK uh, where required, although we do have staff there at different times. Uh, much like uh, the previous, uh, we've got a very strong relationship and advocates in our groups. ASM Global, uh, we just recently did a big deal there with the RAC Arena, um, based out of Perth. Um, we have a fully integrated POS solution. Um, so the front office to the back office. So the e-commerce, the inventory management is particularly important. You heard that. Um, your workforce management, which is a product we've got in the Pizza Hut. And we can have modular entries to integrate in with current systems uh, to make sure there are no barriers to sale. We talked about the contactless entry. 
We've very much used uh, this period during R&D to make sure in C at table, a click and order is all possible from your current point of sale. And we see with many of our providers, you have that great challenge of losing margin with all those third party providers that we're all very, very familiar with. But we've seen particularly in many areas, those third party providers aren't present. And the ability to um, have a venue own their own click and order, delivery, manage their own systems, manage their own uh, uh, footprint without actually having to increase their rent is obviously something that's going to increase their revenue to OPEX and, and their sustainability. We've also done recent deals um, with Capture in the UK, which are in major stadiums such as Twickenham, Murrayfield, uh, Lords, Ascot, uh, and bringing their new systems to Australia as well for large stadiums particularly. Um, there was an announcement on open pay in early FY21, and we've just done a three-year deal with me and you to make sure that we do have a premium in-table ta in um in seat and at table ordering service for many of our customers that use that, whilst also having our own white label solutions if required. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go to the acquisition. Um, we haven't spent a lot of time with that, and that's uh, to give you a little bit of a deep dive on that acquisition. Uh, we have been the major reseller of SwiftPOS over the past several years. So we know the technology very well. Um, we've acquired it for 4.25 million in cash and half a million in shares. There is uh, another 750 due next year uh, on a holdback payment. Uh, the acquisition has been uh, earnings accretive from day one and cash flow accretive from day one. Um, the integration synergies, and I just want to dwell on this third point a little bit, uh, the cross-sell opportunities um, seem minimal, but when you take the opportunity to, we now are no longer the reseller, we are the owner, it does take a lot way barriers to larger deals. And we've seen that, we've seen deals lost because we were the reseller and we have taken that barrier away. We also have found at times that we have lost that to other uh smaller resellers when they can give that local delivery and the ability to manage that pipeline is going to increase sales as well. Throw into that um, the opportunity to sell our own products such as uh, the contacts of entry, the bring your own device mechanisms. We've already seen in the first two weeks those reseller networks selling our own IP into those SwiftPost resellers. On, a, uh, on the financials, it's going to add over 2.3 million to our recurring revenue or 12% increase. As I stated earlier, over $20 million on an annualized basis post acquisition. Um, so we see this as a positive financial deal, a positive um, a customer deal and the cross selling and synergy growth is significant and really going to take us from a, a position where we were turnaround to into that position to grow significantly. Some of the further benefits, I've talked about the venues and the number of countries, uh, and there is some a greater ability when we have a look at our presence in some of our Gulf countries to extend that network. We have staff there. Uh, it's pretty clear that we've increased our customers. Uh, it's pretty clear we understand our technology very well, but also owning your technology roadmap and uh, the ability to make sure the point of sale is the one source of truth. It is the way people generate revenue in a in any given venue and the ability to drive revenue off limited bases. Uh, and just to give a, a picture of this, um, at Stadium Australia, there are nearly 284 of our terminals, um, sorry, 585 of our terminals. And the ability now to be able to have staff go into the seat, into the order and will actually decrease their operating costs by having less staff sitting behind a register and you having to line up for your beers and miss, miss uh, the important parts of the footy game or the cricket game. Um, but the ability for that to be uh, tabled down into your own seat or you be able to go and pre-order that and, and pick it up at a certain time that you want to be able to pre-order. We have membership, gold tiering, silver tiering. And if you're a, a frequent user at a member, pub, club, stadium, if you are a Sydney Roosters fan or a Collingwood fan and they want to be able to give discounts as we're going to do at the RSC Arena, uh, we can provide that as well. Going back to F, um, going into FY21 uh, and reflecting on FY20, uh, we had 25 million 
uh, revenue in FY20, of which 71% was recurring. That's obviously going to increase significantly, which we have talked about. Um, we had $2 million year on year growth in half year net operating cash flow in the second half of FY20 and EBITDA positive, as I've stated, without government assistance. I think that's pretty important. Um, we do have a large addressable market, the stadiums, the arenas, and even prior to the Swift Bus acquisition, we're in uh, just sub 5% of those, what we call our uh, venue market. Um, we have there was a significant amount of right sizing that occurred in FY20, and as a uh, and the significant benefits of that, you know, some contracts only finished in March, April, and so that uh, ongoing benefit will be seen fully realised in FY21, uh, and we're seeing growth in that the values of customers and Indian users to adjacent providers, and we don't want to have any value, um, any barriers to entry as with other providers that are existing technology. Um, I'll let you make your own decision on the uh, modest valuation of uh, EV on recurring revenue. But as I stated, post acquisition, we're at north of 20 million of recurring revenue Australian dollars per year. Just to give you an idea of the Gulf Solution uh, position, um, and I'll go down to the point in yellow at the bottom, MSL is the only company in the world that can deliver world handicapping, golf management and tournament management outside their own country. There is one provider in Scotland that has done all three in for the Scottish Federation. Um, I'm not going to comment how that is going at this point, but uh, we are proven to go outside our own federation and deliver remotely. And uh, we've done over nine countries in 2020, well past 1.6 million golfers during that period. And uh, we have a real expertise in being able to deliver an end-to-end golfing solution. We've just announced a uh, sports partnership to integrate a mobile scoring app. Uh, we're going to go away from um, cards and service providers. And as we integrate with all golf management systems in Australia, for example, we'll be able to integrate your handicapping into that scoring app, giving further um, growth in that part of the business. As we tried to explain, FY20 was most certainly turnaround and the acquisition only two weeks ago is a real signal around our growth strategy. Um, there is real organic growth opportunities just through that process. I've talked about cross-selling. In golf, 60% um, of all golf is in North America and uh, the ability to partner with our established golf systems. And I talked about our unique selling point of being the only company that can deliver world handicapping, tournament management, golf management, that is known. Um, our, some of our competitors um, do deliver one or two of those products, uh, but no one delivers all three. And we're also looking, making sure that we're established with partners. We have found that uh, making sure there are no barriers to sales of our products. We are a good integrator. We make sure we have that ability to give you one seamless connection across our platform so that you are, if you are wedded to a certain product, we're not going to force out those products and we can make sure that we can integrate our products into your products to give you that seamless analytics across the top. We have our own analytics dashboard that can look at uh, your inventory and because we own the point of sale, we know what products are going in, what products are being sold, we know who you are and we know what you buy. In terms of fundamentals, uh, I've just taken the first quarter of FY19, FY20 and FY21. I think that graph reasonably speaks for itself, but there's genuinely been a focus on improving the fundamentals of the business, making sure positive cash flow, looking after shareholders' returns, and then looking for um, opportunity to utilize that free cash flow for strategic uh, acquisitions as we have just done. So look, I, I'm not, uh, we're looking at other sources of funding if required for strategic acquisitions, but we're, our business is now in a sustainable place to grow from this position. Uh, in terms of the future, and this is uh, Arena Racing, one of our customers in the UK, um, and what we're finding is people adapt. Uh, I'm sure all of you who that were in lockdown over certain periods were very keen for a beer or a uh, pie or some sort of fine dining experience post lockdown. And uh, you can see that I'm finding the world is adapting. This is 
where they had to stay in their segregated areas. They would order on their phone. It would link straight back to the point of sale. That would go straight back to the kitchen. And that understanding of the inventory management, the ordering solutions, and the ability to mix with uh, other people in the outdoors, I, I'm finding that people are and businesses are uh, adapting readily and our software is adapting with them. Um, on the second dot point, uh, MSL and Golf Link Partners remain the trusted name in golf handicapping in Australia. Um, and our European golf business, Golf Box, is driving new sales through the world handicapping system. Uh, it is a 97% SaaS business. We own all our own IP in golf and it is a high margin business. And what we've also seen, the impact of COVID-19 has encouraged MSL to develop and deliver a new suite of products that we've talked about, which benefit our customers by providing a non-traditional methods of engage with our guests. And uh, you can see a great example of that non-traditional engagement in that picture attached. Corporate snapshot uh, for all, um, we've seen a, a, a spike um, post the acquisition of SwiftPOS. I think the fact that uh, we're getting greater confidence, um, you'll see back in April and May, even uh, we, um, we took a significant drop due to our exposure to stadiums and uh, I think that at that point it was reasonably misplaced and our directors um, invested at that point as did uh, many of the staff at that point because we believe in the recurring revenue story. So I'm um, really proud about the last six months. We do believe that we're heading into a period of really strong growth after a period of turnaround. Um, and I thank you for your time and I will, I will pass you back. Yeah, that's great, Pat. We have a couple of questions coming live and I've got one or two here to her email from the same person that couldn't join us for the last one, but let's tackle the live ones first. Um, first up, uh, why do you not charge more than $3.50 for the golf handicapping? It, it, it seems like a low number. It's $3.50 per player. So if golf expands to, uh, and golf has expanded over the last little bit, so it's a it's a long-term contract with Golf Australia, um, the ability to leverage the IP, um, and that, that contract is locked until 2025. We have the ability to, say in Norway, is, um, far more socialistic country, the way we do it is we pay the federation as a one-off fee and they provide it to all their golfers for free. So there are different models that are provided uh, depending on which federation and the history of golf it's, um, in that given country. Okay, actually, I'll take one of these email ones first because it's a, it's linked to golf and the other questions are linked to the other business. Um, okay. In terms of um, the US, is it like uh, Australia? Do you need to do like a national deal or is it at a state level with like, I don't know, North Carolina golf? Or mm -hmm. is it with, you know, individual clubs uh, and appreciate, you know, some of them could be much larger than others, depending on where you yeah, are. Yeah, oh, look, at, look, California golf is bigger than, um, I think, the, uh, from the fourth biggest uh, golfing country afterwards. No, very much um, state by state and country club level. So there is a far more uh, uh, membership-based model in the US. We have membership based products that integrate in with our golf management system. And that's where you saw in a very early slide. So um, we would look to partner, we won't look to set up and uh, establish a business there. I know MSL in the past, set up an office in Dubai. Um, and it was far easier to do things remote. And um, so we have talked to partners that go into um, clubs, country clubs in inverted commas, and those bigger states to drive it on an individual basis, but to get the support of individual states is a very good driver and be able to drive some of the products such as tournament management and world handicapping is most certainly done on a state level. So it's product by product does depend on what, uh, which cut where you start your customer journey. Okay, great. Um... Uh, I guess the, the pipeline for acquisitions now, um, is it looking for other products that MSL has integrations with that can be brought in house or is it, you know, getting access, getting access to, to different markets perhaps? I think um, so the different markets is absolutely. So in the 26 countries, we are in the venues business. Um, you know, it's predominated by Australia and New Zealand, and it's been very much through reputation those other countries have 
taken up um, swift pulse and a little bit like you heard before you'll get a referral from a, a national or international company and they say can we implement your systems over here in cook islands in the us in japan india we are looking in, and started conversations around um, enterprise type deals in those other countries so uh, we believe there is organic growth in australia we have a very strong foothold in australia and new zealand but far more growth from overseas. And we do expect over the next couple of years that to shift from effectively 80-20 in our venues business in Australia to 50-50 over that period. Okay. And then what's the sales pitch for Swift Pass over a competing system? Is it price, functionality, ease of use, or a combination of all of the above? So functionality is, is incredibly important. It has an integrated module. So what happens with a lot of the other systems, they have a lovely soft interface that sits that you might see as a customer, but it doesn't always integrate back with the kitchen. It dead doesn't integrate back with the inventory. And if you want to run one of these uh, uh, larger venues that has um, a lot of different ways that you can pay, and many people on this call will have had to split a bill. Many, many of these systems can't do that. Most of our competitors can't. Their ability to be able to integrate back with your workforce inventory, your kitchen, all the way through to your ordering system at the front, and its adaptability is is very impressive. Uh, and then another question around, um, I guess, is the golf business core to MSL going forward um, or is it going to be, I guess, like the sole, they say the sole Pat's Brickworks model where <laughs> the box is, you know, completely different to their, let's say their investment hole and company business on the other side, but actually over time, it's like worked very well for them. Yeah, look, it, it's a really interesting part of the business. It is, as I said, it's a high margin business. We have a strong foothold in that business. Um, it needs to go to the US to get that stronger growth, which we, we've talked about. But there is some integration. So when you think about um, a point of sale at a golf location, uh, your ability to go and get your beers on your phone at your fourth hole, or you want to pre-order your meals um, as you're coming in after the ninth hole or the 18th hole. And that's the derivation of where you saw, that was the genesis of how these two um, streams, which seem very different, actually sort of intersect. And we do see a lot of business in our point of sale in golf uh, businesses there there are over uh, 1500 golf courses in australia as venues okay great if we don't have any more questions and i'm conscious we're, we're pushing up on the hour i'm going to leave it there for today and um, pat thank you very much for uh joining us from brisbane this morning i know it's a little bit earlier and um, north of the border there for you but thank you very much for for getting up early Oh, Mark, compared to um, calls from Tel Aviv, I consider myself very lucky. And uh, hopefully I got you back on time by a couple of minutes. You did. Thank you very much. The opening match is just about to start. So I'm going to let everybody get back to, <laughs> I'm going to, let everybody get back to their desk uh, and uh, get, back to, get back to their screens. And we'll have one more penultimate or we'll have the final one of the year uh, next Thursday. Um, so watch out for, for that. I'll be announcing our presenters probably tomorrow or Monday. Okay, thank you, Pat. Thank you, everyone.